hey, hey, what's been good about your day? It's Marty Newport, time for story time. We are coming to an end of Heaven Changes Everything by Todd and Sonia Burpo. Um, it has been absolutely awesome for me. I hope it's been great for you. We're already on chapter 41. It's called Yes, No, and Not Yet. Let's see what it says. Hey, Colton, I bet you asked if you could have a sword, didn't you? I asked. At that, Colton's scowl melted into a uh, de dejected frown, and his shoulders slumped toward the floor. Yeah, I did, but Jesus wouldn't let me have one. He said I'd have to be, it'd be too dangerous. Todd says, heaven is for real, and that means that when a toddler visiting heaven asks Jesus for a real sword, Jesus says no. When Colton told me this, I had to wonder if Jesus knew a sword-wielding toddler would be too dangerous to himself or to others. The negative response in heaven came from after Colton had gotten another no answer when he asked the angels to sing, We will, we will rock you, as they escorted him to Jesus. And then there was the issue of his sister hugging him, when being hugged by a girl wasn't this little guy's favorite thing. We may think of heaven as a place where we get everything we want, where we always get our way, but that wouldn't be real. Heaven is a good and perfect place, but sometimes what we think we want, at least here on earth, doesn't mean heaven doesn't meet heaven's good and perfect criteria. Sometimes Jesus says no. When I'm honest with myself and really look at what's happening, I realize that most of the time when I get get no answers to my prayers, I'm praying for easy. On those days when I ask God to take my life to make my life easy, I tend to hear lots of no's as the challenges roll on. No is not my favorite answer, for sure. But I've lived long enough to know we've had enough glimpses of God's bigger plan for my life that I can see God at work in, my, in many of those negative answers. I have to agree with the message in Garth Brooks' song, One of God's Greatest Gifts is Unanswered Prayers. Sometimes, sometimes God says no. Sometimes he says yes. And I can handle both of those answers. But let me tell you what's harder for me than no. It's when God says, wait. It's the not yet answers that are hardest for me. The wait answers. The answers that seem like no answer at all for a long time. I am by nature a let's get things done kind of guy. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. For me, waiting is difficult. So I tend to ask God, if you want this, and surely you do, why not now? Why can't you make it happen today? When God whispers something like this to me, you are a parent. You know how this works. If my three-year-old son were to have asked me for a sharp sword, there is no way I would have given it to him. I would know he couldn't handle it yet. Right now, I'm struggling with another stage of life as a parent. I have a teenager who will so soon turn 16. Almost every parent knows what that means. Dad, can I have the keys? Fortunately, there are some laws in our society I really appreciate during this stage. One of them is that before someone sits behind the wheel of mo a moving vehicle, he or she has to pass a test that hopefully demonstrates that person can operate the vehicle carefully, safely, and courteously and come back home to mom and dad. Until teenagers are ready, that law helps us parents say, you have to wait. To teenagers eager to drive and having the freedom to go where they, want, where they please, they wait. Uh, that wait can seem like an eternity. But for their sake especially, and for other people's sake too, a parent can't let kids drive until they're ready. So they have to wait and grow and learn. And eventually, they get their driver's license. Then, after 16, life continues and they keep growing and maturing. For me, there was a growing period before I was ready to become a husband. I needed to wait and add some more knowledge and maturity to my lifetime collection. Then, after marriage, there was another growing period. Before I was ready to become a father, those gifts I now enjoy. My marriage, my children, God gave to me but I had to wait until he knew I was ready for them. In the book of Genesis, we watch a young man named Joseph grow and gain maturity. Joseph had an incredible gift of seeing and interpreting dreams, but just like most teenagers, when he first discovered the gift, he wasn't mature enough to handle it. 
His arrogance caused him to boast to his brothers and even to his parents, and he'd had a dream that said one day they would bow down to him. Well, that arrogance led to a lot of awful events in Joseph's life. Betrayal, slavery, a dungeon. Then, after a long wait, the second highest position in Egypt. Finally, 17 years after that first dream he'd boasted about, it came true. Joseph's brothers bowed before him asking for food. If an immature person had been in that place, he would have gloated over his brother's forced humility. He could have mocked them, punished them. Instead, this is what Joseph said about his brothers selling him into slavery. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. It's almost like he was saying, I need to grow up and God used the difficulties you caused me to suffer to make that happen. Those difficulties brought me to this point where I am mature enough to handle the dreams God gave me. Now, I'm not saying immaturity is the only reason God gives us not yet answers to our prayers. But in life, it's been a big reason why I haven't, why I've had to wait. I see that now after the growing has been done. The waiting is over and the prayer has been answered. Could there be some answer in your prayer where the obstacle to yes is a growth issue? Here are two truths to remember if a growth issue is causing you to have to wait. First, God will know when you're ready, before you know. And second, if you ask him to grow you so you can be ready, he's pretty good at that too. So what can God say yes to tomorrow if you grow today? Psalm 41 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Let's go on to page or to chapter 42. This is called Being Ourselves in Heaven. With what Colton had said about Pop and about his sister, I began to think about heaven in a different way. Not just a place with jeweled gates, shining rivers, and streets of gold, but a realm of joy and fellowship both for those who are with us in eternity and those still on earth, whose arrival we eagerly anticipated. A place where I would one day walk and talk with my grandfather who had meant so much to me and with the daughter I had never met. Todd says many of Colton's stories about heaven had convinced me that we'll retain our identities there, our quirks, our preferences, our uniqueness, but we will lose the bad stuff our selfishness, our insecurities, our guilt, sicknesses, and disabilities. Even though our heavenly bodies will def definitely be better, we'll still be us. And so will our family members, but they may not be as we remembered them. That's why I suggest you keep that box of old family photos next to your bed. Let me explain. As a firefighter, I've seen a lot of those house fires, and let me tell you, they rarely happen like you see in the movies. In real life, family members and even firefighters don't have time to develop a dramatic storyline while flames roar around them. In real life, you have about five survivable minutes to get out of that house before deadly smoke and toxic fumes overwhelm you. In real life, you may have only 10 minutes until the roof collapses. Some modern construction methods can make newer houses far more dangerous than older ones. You don't have time to run around looking for your most valuable possessions. You and your family members need to know exactly what to do when that smoke alarm goes off in the middle of the night or in the daytime for that matter. Get the people and get out. But if you have time to grab maybe one thing besides the people, let me suggest something you might keep close to the bed so you can take it along. What I'm suggesting you take with you out of the fire is a box or album of old photos your mother or grandmother may have given you. You know, the one I'm talking about, the box in the back of the closet, shelf right, uh, shelf right now, the box holding that picture of grandma and grandpa on their wedding day, the one of your great granddad the day he went off to war, the pictures that show the previous generations of your family, not as they may appear now, but as they looked in their prime. Take those photos with you out of the fire. Why? Because they'll help you recognize the people who are going to come to greet you when you get to heaven. As Sonia and I travel the country, we're asked again and again, are we still going to be ourselves in heaven? And how will I recognize my loved ones when I get to heaven? Colton's experiences convince us the answer to the first question is definitely yes. The answer to the second question may depend on whether you've studied those old family pictures. 
because those who died when they were old or crippled by illness or injury aren't going to be old or crippled when you see them in heaven. Won't it be fun to call them by name rather than being like Colton and have to have the relationship explained to you? It's not only Colton's experiences that have convinced me we'll retain our identities in heaven. I also base that opinion on the glimpse of heaven the Bible gives us in Matthew 17 when it describes two early Bible characters, Elijah and Moses, who came back to earth as themselves with the same names. While they chatted with Jesus, the apostles Peter, James, and John got to see them and were introduced to them as the same Moses and Elijah whose stories had been told in the Old Testament. They were in their heavenly bodies, and yet they were here on earth, named and recognizable. When we get to heaven, we will retain our individuality. Our heavenly bodies will be just as diverse as our earthly ones. After all, God didn't use a cookie cutter when he made us. God loves individuality and creativity. But how many of you know that God also loves families? Our relationships with one another, even though they will be better, will seem to be in, in act as well, intact as well. When Colton visited heaven, he was a little boy who still needed to be looked after, and his great-grandfather, Pop, was one of those who did that. After hearing Colton's story and having him say that his great-grandfather, Pop, was looking out for him and his sister there, many people have lost a parent and a child, uh, and a child have, to to have told us how comforting that thought is to know that their mom or dad is watching out for their son or daughter in heaven. It's another reason that so many people have been impacted by heaven is for real. All of us who believe in heaven have had that hope. Colton's visit helps confirm it for us. Interestingly, our family members in heaven recognized Colton before he recognized them. That fact has sent me digging through our old box of old black and white photos, studying those faces of my grandparents great-grandparents, aunts, uncles, as they looked in their younger days. When I get to heaven, I want to recognize those loved ones, including those I've never even met, and call them my name as they come up to greet me. That makes the old, the old pictures pretty valuable to me. That's why I suggest they be something you take with you out of a burning house. Just let me add one more thought. What if your house never catches fire? Fire or no fire, don't you think it would still be worth your time? to sit down with your kids and study those old pictures anyway. Then, unlike Colton, you and your child may not be surprised when you get to heaven and an unknown little girl or some other bright-faced person eager to greet you comes running up to give you a big hug. As far as stuff is concerned, is there anything else in your house today that will matter to you when you get to heaven besides the people in those pictures? Psalm 89, 36 through 37 says, his family will go on forever. His kingdom will last before me like the sun. It will continue forever like the moon, like a dependable witness in the sky. I hope you study those uh, pictures today or, or sometime soon. What a great family after dinner conversation to get those out and look at those. Look at those hairdos, look at those dresses and laugh, but also study those faces. I hope you have a great day.